All right, so today we are going to go with another nitromethane attempt, but on a different saw. This saw, we have been running it on methanol with an expansion chamber. Uh, it is the John Cutter 5800, uh, a very powerful uh, little saw, I'll tell you. Uh, it surprises everybody who runs it. But today I want to see if we got enough out of the carb to take a little nitromethane in the mix. Uh, I got smoke blowing on my face. I got a fire going on inside. But uh, we're going to see what happens if we put a little nitromethane to the mix and see if she likes it. I had a little bit of room in the tunability of the carburetor. So we're going to see if this makes a difference. You know what I mean? Um, it would be my first saw that is capable of running nitromethane with an expansion chamber. That's kind of the purpose here is to see if I notice a difference with the expansion chamber running nitromethane because we're going to get ready to do some more of these types of projects. And, you know, I'm trying to get a feel for it as much as I can before I get really involved. You know what I mean? So let's see what happens. Uh, I pulled the big air filter off. Uh, there was a big air filter set up on it. I pulled that off, took it back to the stock air filter cover, but there's no air filter on it at all. So I doubt there's a big difference there. Um, I did that because I wanted a big hole, access hole to the carburetor to, uh, to prime it. Uh, you know, this thing is a pain in the butt to get started sometimes and it's because it needs a prime and you got to pull the air filter off every time. So I decided to just yank that sucker off of there and we're just going to be able to squirt right into the carburetor for a prime. So it's a little cleaner looking this way uh, because she looks more stock, you know, but let's go ahead and see what happens. See if we can get her fire up. Um, this is a shorter bar than what it comes with. Uh, it is a three H chain square hand filed chain. It's one of my better ones, but not my best one. So, alrighty, let's see what happens. But it's another level. You got to really think about it. It's the that. saw. You, you got to have so much torque available to pull that sucker. And the chain, if you get it just mm -hmm. a little hungry, forget it. To give it a run. That's where I'm trying to get with my chains. That chain is like... The amount of torque is popper? crazy. Yep. <laughs>
I learned something on this video uh, I'm gonna share it with you but before I do that I have a clip question I don't know an idea I have an idea of my firewood situation so I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in right now and then we'll come back and I'll explain what I learned already so I got a question why don't we cut our firewood into cookie sizes I cannot find one real issue with doing this other than stacking, really. That's the only issue I can find by using cookie wood. That's the only real reason I can find for using cookie wood for fire. You know what I mean? Like the only negative I can think of is because of the stacking ability of it. I mean, you could stack it, but then it wouldn't dry very well. You know what I mean? You almost need it to be just tossed random in a pile. That'd be like a necessity. But literally, you start with this, and then as soon as that takes off, you start throwing this in, then to this, and then you finish off the rest of your burn with that. Do you realize how easy that is to cut? versus cutting it and splitting it and stacking it. I mean, I'm literally just cutting and tossing it into a pile. I am seriously considering doing all of my firewood like this. Seriously. This stuff dries way faster than split wood because you know, the moisture doesn't move through the bark edge, it moves through the end. So the thinner it is, the faster it dries. And I've had stuff like this typically dries within a week, you know? So just kind of give you an idea. I cannot find one disadvantage to not using cookie wood for firewood other than the stacking. Um, and I guess, if you put it outside, 
exposed to the elements. When it rains, it will not want to flow enough airflow through the wood to keep it good and dry. So it has to be stored under a roof or tarp or something of some sort. But that's, that's really the big disadvantage, I guess you could say, is the way you have to store it. But otherwise, doing that saves, I bet you, well, it, it eliminates all of your splitting time. So cut for an hour and split for four. You know what I mean? Why not just cut for an hour and then cut for, for another hour and cut for another hour? It, and it'll basically eliminate your splitting time. I'm seriously thinking about doing this. Tell me what you think. Cause she burns great. All right, there we go. It actually runs pretty good. I prefer it on methanol, but just because it runs better on methanol. Um, it doesn't have those heat issues like it does here. It still has heat issues. This amplified it. So I bet you a little bit of tweaking though, we could clean it up. Um, it definitely has a stupid amount of torque. Uh, so that's a 16 inch bar and we're, you know, I bet you we're 10 or 12 inches of wood and it just plows through it. Um, but the torque this thing has right now is substantially more than what they do factory. I think the nitromethane on this saw, if I wanted to, I could continue this and probably get her tweaked really good. It's that close, you know what I mean? Now, personally, I'm probably going to leave this as a methanol build. Um, what it did, though, is it taught me something. I just learned a lesson. So the saw was fat on the first cut, perfect on the second cut, and lean to the point of starving out on the third cut. So that's a, I'm fairly certain that's a heat thing. Um, so as she gets hotter, she leans out. You know what I mean? I, I think that's a heat thing because I'm fat on the first cut. But, so the first two cuts cut great. I mean, the first one's a little on the fat side, but you don't notice it. You know, not in a cut. The second cut is like spot on. It's just the third one. She just kind of starves out. So, you know, more fuel. It's kind of funny. All the more nitromethane that's running through the system right now, it's how drastic of a difference it makes. It's like a small amount of nitromethane makes a huge difference. And can you imagine what it's going to be like when I start pushing stuff at higher and higher levels of nitromethane? It's going to be ridiculous. So I definitely learned something here, though. Uh, we're going to be playing with heat in our builds, I think. So I think we're going to need to really think about running larger squish bands or uh, larger squish numbers, all that stuff. You know, don't worry about the compression. Keep it kind of low. Uh, I mean, this thing in fact reform, this thing ain't got squat for compression. You can see how it runs. The fuel is compensating for that 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 little thing so you know what i mean don't worry about the compression keep it low keep nice bigger squish squish numbers you know anything we can do to help with the heat uh, i think keeping them cool is going to be pretty pretty dang important here so yeah now i have an idea what i got to do in the future so i hope you like this one we'll catch you in the next one Later.